In this video, I will provide you with a few ideas on how you can support the loads so that repairs can be made below them to the framing base plates, framing components, and in some cases, even the floor framing. Let's go ahead and take the roof off. And the first thing I want to point out is that less of an angle is always going to be better than more of an angle. But I do understand that there will be some cases where this is all you're going to be able to do. I do not recommend going more than 10 degrees for something like this. Uh, I mean, that's really pushing it, in my opinion. Now, I'm not a structural engineer, so these are just ideas you need to keep in mind. And they're not going to work on every project. I would recommend attaching your temporary supports with some type of framing anchors that can be screwed together. Screw them to the plates and that way the screws can be removed easily. Nails might be a, a little bit harder to remove. And um, you can always set them next to the wall studs like we have here and then screw them in and then screw them in like you would toenail. Screw it in at an angle into the into the underside of the top plates also. Something else I'd like to point out is sometimes you're just going to, you know, go in. I've seen this done a lot. Someone will go in and um, just set the support boards wherever. And if there is nothing underneath them, that could be a problem. You can see here where the support stud is off just a little bit. Now, this won't be that big of a problem on 12 inch center spacing joist or maybe 16 inch on center spacing but could be a problem if this is in the center of a two foot spacing so i wanted to point that out if you are going to put these supports in put them over the uh, joist if possible and you can see here where they are more located over the joist you if you're looking for some additional support you can always put a block on top of the soil and get a jack or use some blocks. Just simply install some blocks underneath it. And you can see here where the the support is going underneath a, the top plates for a header. And here we have the other one also. Here's one that goes all the way down to the ground if you have removed the sheathing. You can always install a block. And uh, if you are going to do this, let's say you need to put a few more wall studs in, simply put like a 4 by 12 or a 4 by 10 Lay it on top of the ground and drive some stakes in it. Um, drive some stakes behind the wood and then screw the stakes to the wood to prevent the beam from moving. Hope that makes sense. And like I said, you just make this a little bit longer. If you need an, if you're going to work on an eight foot section, then maybe get an eight foot or a ten foot, uh, four by ten, four by twelve, and lay it down there if you can. You know, you might not be able to get it in there if you don't have the room. I understand that, um, but it, you could just drive a stake down here and um, do these individually. Also, you know, dr just put some stakes. And I think I have another video. I will put a link in here somewhere so that you can see it um, that I made. This is actually a second part to that video to give some uh, more ideas to people who are working with crawl spaces and floor framing instead of solid concrete building foundations. Here's another method that you can use. Put a 4x10 or a 4x12 on top of the sheathing and then brace from there. Just kind of whip through it here. You understand how to connect the top plates to the temporary supports and to the bottom. Simply use the framing anchors and make sure that you, you have this uh, beam supported to where it is not going to move. And make sure you have enough space. Leave yourself at least a, an inch or something if you're going to be replacing the framing plates also, it's always, uh, I've seen people and done it myself. I shove this board right up against uh, here, and then there's a problem with that, with uh, where this would have to move, and that is not going to be good. So give you, always give yourself enough room. You've got to plan ahead on the repairs. got to really figure out what you're going to be doing before you actually do it and set up the support system. 
One to give you an idea here, this you can see is transferring the support over the joist a little bit uh, more evenly. And you know, are you gonna get the same thing if you just take the support boards and put them on top of the joist? I think you would. I just like this method. It makes me feel more comfortable when I'm uh, doing repairs like this. So this would be my preferred method. Give you an idea. Now, what do you do if the support studs need to be located where the joists are running in the other direction? I would suggest using the same method with the 4 by 12 and the support studs and the anchors. Now, you can see here where the load would be transferred to one joist, and this isn't going to be good. Where we had it before, it would be transferring to the two maybe two, three, or four, or more joists. So something like this would be supported by one joist, and this isn't going to be good. So what I would suggest would be to add some type of support blocks underneath the, the joist, and, or a jack. Use whatever method you would feel comfortable with. And, um, and remember, jacks, you can use the screw jacks, but hydraulic jacks leak. I've said this enough in my videos. Um, if you're gonna do something like this, screw jacks will be better. Um, for your support or simply um, use the blocks. Here's another method you could install a full length beam, something that would support the load and of course it would sit on top of two points where there is some type of a foundation or footing underneath it and the beam of course would sit on top of the framing plates and you couldn't really set it on top of the plywood here uh, unless you provided additional support on the other side. So let's go ahead and take get another view here. You can see where these boards are going to prevent the beam from leaning this way. You are going to have pressure coming down. If you don't have these braces on here, then this beam could actually just get pushed over. Wanted to give you an idea of what it would look like. The footing is sitting on top of a the building foundation. Let me see if I did that right. There we go. So you can see here where there is a solid concrete uh, footing, solid footing, the load transfers down through it. And again, this is just another method. The braces, some type of framing plate, you don't have to use this method here, but you will need to brace this to prevent it from pushing this way. This is our last example. Just kind of wanted to throw one more thing out. What if you want to use a beam that's a little shorter? And that could be for a variety of different reasons. You can actually do that. And all you would need to do is put some type of a support system underneath it that would transfer down to the ground. And you can see right here, just simply use some blocks, blocked it up even with the joists. And again, you could always use jacks for this. Uh, but block it up, make sure that it's supported, and you could use this same method on each side also if you were working in the middle of a wall somewhere. And again, you're going to need the braces for something like this. And I'd like to point out that something like this right here could be used throughout the house. This doesn't need to be just a uh, method used for joists that, that where the beam support beam would be running parallel to. You could use this system where the joists are perpendicular to this for like for example over here and you could use it for other walls in other parts of the house but I wanted to make sure I made this video because uh, you know when you're doing something on a solid concrete foundation it's usually just build the little wall underneath there and you're done but when you're dealing with a subfloor and joist, and joist that might be undersized or over spanned, spaced a little too far apart, two foot on center, then uh, some of these methods right here are really going to help you out and a lot more than just putting the support boards right on top of the floor sheathing.